headbangers. I'm Courtney, aka The Versatile Virgo, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I run a metal lifestyle blog, theversatilevirgo.com, which focuses on the best things in life, music, food, and sometimes fashion. So if that's something that interests you, make sure to check it out. I've linked it in the description below. Zeal and Ardor have just released their third self-titled album, and I liked it so much, I had to talk to you guys about it today. Each track is different from the last, and I think that's what contributes to listening to this album as a whole. So today I'm going to take you through my thought process as I was listening to it track by track. Zeal and Ardor opens with the title track, which almost sounds like a warning sound for the end of days, and you just immediately start feeling this hype. It's almost kind of like when you're at a concert and the band's about to come on stage and the music's starting and the lights are turned down, but then the stage lights are starting to turn up and you're just like feeling this anticipation. And then the vocals start and you just keep getting even more excited. It just kind of gets you feeling like, oh man, we're in for something amazing. Which is what I was expecting from this album, by the way. I have been looking forward to this for a long time and Zeal and Ardor is one of my favorite newer bands. So I had very high expectations for this album. So Run Follows That, which was initially released as a single last year, and it was actually one of my personal favorite songs of 2021. I liked it so much, I even included it on my Heavy Halloween playlist, which I'll link in the description below because... Halloween is every day and spooky season never ends. Run is just so massively heavy and it has this dark and kind of demonic feel to it. And if you're new to Zeal and Ardor, I think this song is a great example of what they do so well, which is combining sounds like black metal with sounds like gospel, something that you might not think would work, but Zeal and Ardor makes it work. The next song, Death to the Holy, kind of goes further into that gospel slash spiritual direction. It has more key in it, but it's still crazy heavy. I love the drums on this song too. They have that kind of machine gun style explosiveness to them. And then Immersion follows that, which is completely different from everything we've heard so far. When it starts out, you almost think it's going to be more of an electronic track and you're kind of like, what's this? And then the screaming starts and you're like, oh yeah, there we go. It's almost kind of like an atmospheric black metal track, but very different from what I think would be your first thought that comes to mind when it comes to atmospheric black metal. And it also definitely lives up to its name for the listener. From there, we get into Golden Liar. And this is one of those songs that you can kind of see being in a movie or a TV show. I actually wouldn't be surprised if it got picked up like that. It's not necessarily completely acoustic, but it has that vibe to it for a lot of the song. And then towards the end, it grows into this like grand finale, if you will. You'd think that that sort of acoustic vibe would make the album lose its momentum, but this song is so heavy, it just crushes you. It's a great example example of how versatile Zeal and Ardor is. An absolutely stunning piece of music. Erase follows that, which again kind of tricks you because it starts off with this acoustic feel before it immediately explodes into this deeply heavy battle hymn. But when I say hymn, it's more like a hymn from the depths of hell. Or at least it feels like it's pulling you back and forth between there and the mortal world. The next song, Bow, is another catchy and heavy jam with that gospel vibe to it. But it has that same feel that the intro track had and it almost kind of feels like a continuation from what we heard from that. Which I think makes it a great way to show how the album progresses. The music on this album still keeps a consistent theme so it almost kind of feels like it's telling you a story one of complete liberation. We then get into Feed the Machine, which is dark and heavy before it strips back to that southern rock and gospel vibe that almost feels like you're just sitting in a graveyard in the south at 3 a.m. There's this chanting and breakdown towards the end of the song that again just builds that intensity before it kind of strips away again. Then we jump right back into that full intensity with I Caught You. This song is an absolute banger even when the vocals are whispering. If you didn't think a whisper could be heavy, you'd be wrong. This song is very high energy and one that I could definitely see getting picked up for radio airplay, depending on if the station plays good new music or not. I can tell you this song will definitely be on my February edition of New Music Monthly over at theversatilevirgo.com. You can sign up for my email list 
over there so you don't miss it. And just so you know, I don't send a bunch of emails. My current email subscribers will tell you I try to send emails once a week, but I don't always stick to that. So make sure to follow me on Instagram as well. All of that is linked below along with the current edition of New Music Monthly so you can discover even more heavy new music and let me know what songs you want to see on our best songs of 2022 list by casting your vote at the bottom of the page. Okay, back to Zealand Arder. Church Burns is another great heavy track with that southern gospel vibe to it. This song is vengeful, but it's delivered in a way that connects the listener to that vengefulness, and you can feel it too, at least for this former Catholic school student. That anger and resentment that some of us end up feeling towards religious establishment is present here, and I thank Zealand Arder for presenting it in a way that humanizes that feeling, not demonizes it. The next song I'm going to pronounce incorrectly, so try not to roast me too much. Goddardamburg basically combines black metal with a church chorus, making this song intensely and hauntingly heavy. A lot of this song is in German, and I read in an interview that Zealand Arter vocalist Manuel did with Kerrang, which is linked in the description below for reference, that he and his friends would go to a squat venue in Europe on the weekend and watch bands like German grindcore outfit Japanischki Kamor Hishpil. So I kind of wonder if this is an ode to that a little bit. And then from that crazy heaviness, Zealand Arter pulls back a little bit again with a more bluesy track called Hold Your Head Low. And yes, it adds in that black metal again just for an amazing blend of music. Another reason I love Zealand Arter. This is one of these standout tracks on the album for me, at least so far based on first impressions since it was just released. From that bluesy track, Zealand Arter jumps into the high energy, JMB, which has riffs that are a blend of wildly heavy and then almost kind of like jam rock, which I thought was kind of cool. The album closes with A-H-I-L. This song opens with more of an industrial vibe to it, which almost kind of feels like you're waking up from the aftermath of everything that we just heard. After all, we did just journey with Zeal and Ardor, not through parts of just heaven, hell, and earth, but this album also feels like you're traveling through time and space. And I think this instrumental track is a great way of closing that up. So overall, this album is amazing. And I personally think this is Zeal and Arter's best album yet. It will definitely be a contender for my album of the year list. The drums on this thing are just beyond explosive. The vocals are out of this world and the riffs do it all. This album has this crazy intense energy and it almost feels like Zeal and Arter managed to combine heaven and hell. I've been waiting for this album and it delivered beyond what my expectations were for it. So thank you, Zeal and Arter, for this amazing collection of music. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel because now that I'm a little more recovered from my shoulder surgery, I'm planning to be back on my once a week posting schedule. And I also plan on doing a lot more album reviews like this on my YouTube channel this year. So drop me a comment below and let me know what other albums Albums you're looking forward to in 2022 so I can check them out for a possible review. And of course, there's always new stuff each week over on my blog, theversatilevirgo.com. I just shared my Oreo truffles recipe, and if you're looking for a last minute Valentine's Day gift, I highly recommend checking it out. Plus, there's other reviews and interviews and things like that over there too. Have a great weekend, everybody, and stay heavy.